section 3.6 is about derivatives of logarithmic functions. Okay, and I'm just going to give them to you right up front. The derivative of log base a of x is equal to 1 over x times ln a, and the derivative of the natural log is just 1 over x. And you can see that this follows from this derivative because natural log of e is just equal to 1. Um, how do you prove this? Well, you can use implicit differentiation, okay, as we did with arc sine in section 3.5 um, to figure out this derivative. I'm not going to go through it because the process is basically the same, okay? Um, so check that out in your textbook. But let's do some examples. Uh, so find the derivative. So th this just follows directly from the formula. Uh, y prime is equal to 1 over x times ln of 3. Uh, here we are going to have to use the chain rule. Here's my inside function. Um, here I can see f of x is ln x to the 1 third. So using the chain rule, I have f prime of x is 1 third, my inside function to the negative 2 thirds, times the derivative of the inside function, which we know is 1 over x. So cleaning the, this up a little bit, I get 1 over 3x times the cube root of ln x squared. Okay. Going down here, I have another composition. Okay, my outside function though is a log, and my inside function is a polynomial. So that was the opposite of what happened in example two, where the inside function was a log, and the outside function was a power function. Okay, so this is the opposite case. Um, in this case, my inside function, okay, well, the derivative of log base two is going to be one over x log two, natural log of two, Okay, so you have 1 over my inside function times ln of 2. And I multiply this by the derivative of the inside function, which is 10x minus 7. And simplifying a little bit, we get 10x minus 7 over 5x squared minus 7x plus 1 times ln of 2, and this is just a number, right? So you can basically see that whenever you have a function of this form, like a log on the outside and some other function in the inside, the derivative ends up having this form. Um, we have, it's, it's the derivative of the inside function over the inside function, and you might have this factor of ln2 depending on what your base is. Um, so the basic pattern in that you want to look out for is um, is that, let me just give you a quick example, derivative of, let's say, the natural log of some function h of x. Notice how it has the form h prime of x over h of x. So this is something that will come up a lot later in this course, this pattern that you see here. The next thing I want to talk about is logarithmic differentiation. Uh, logarithmic differentiation is just another technique of differentiation that allows us to compute derivatives that would either be very difficult to compute in other ways or that would just be impossible to compute using the laws that we currently have. Here are the steps for logarithmic differentiation. First step is we take the natural log of both sides of our function or equation. The next step is that we use properties of logs to expand. Then we differentiate implicitly. And finally, we isolate y prime and write everything in terms of x. So you can always follow these steps. So here's the first example. With this function would be a pain to differentiate using, you know, you'd have to use the product rule, the chain rule, the quotient rule, the chain rule again. 
uh, it would get kind of messy. You could differentiate it using the law, you know, rules for derivatives, but it would just be messy. So I'm going to go through logarithmic differentiation. The first step was we apply natural log to both sides. Okay, the second step is I use the properties and laws of logarithms to rewrite this, um, expanding it as much as possible. So, Now that I've expanded it, the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to use implicit differentiation. Um, so implicit different differentiation, first I'll take the derivative of this with respect to x. So we get 1 over y times y prime. I use the chain rule here. <clears throat> derivative of this with respect to x is 1 over x plus 1 plus the derivative of this with respect to x is going to be 1 over x squared minus 1 times 2x. So I'm using the chain rule there. Minus 9 times 1 over 5x plus 1 times 5. Cleaning this up a little bit, I get uh, 1 over y times y prime. These I can cancel, so and finally I want to solve for y prime and write my answer in terms of <coughs> uh, x. So if y prime is equal to this expression here, we're going to multiply it by y. So I have y times But I'm going to convert this back. I'm going to use the original here so that everything is in terms of x. And I multiply it by this huge thing. And we're pretty much done. <clears throat> so there's my derivative right there. The second example, um, this function, it, we don't really have any uh, rules that would allow us to differentiate this function because the variable x is appearing in the exponent and it's also appearing in the base. Um, <clears throat> so this is not a uh, you know, composition of polynomial or exponential functions. We really don't have any rules that would allow us to differentiate this. Uh, but what we can do is we can try to use logarithmic differentiation. So remember this first step is we apply the natural log to both sides. Remember in WebAssign um, to always put parentheses around <coughs> your input for at cosine or sine or natural log. Okay, so now the second step is we use the property of logs to, you know, sort of bring this x out of the exponent. So I have ln y is equal to x times ln of cosine of x. And the third step is we apply implicit differentiation. So I'm going to uh, differentiate both sides. The de derivative of this with respect to x is 1 over y times y prime once again. To differentiate this, I need to use the product rule. Um, so the derivative of x is 1 times plus x. The derivative of natural log of cosine x is 1 over cosine x times the derivative of my inside function, which is negative sine x. So I'm using the chain rule there. Now I'm going to clean this up a little bit. And finally, I solve for y prime, and
and rewrite so this is complete E in terms of X. And that is my <clears throat> final derivative. This is my y prime.